Oh, what a mess. This is Neil Schneider from Meant to Be Seen. Welcome back to my messy basement and happy Canada Day. 150 years in the making, so we have a special episode for you today. We're going to be joined by Anna Serrano. Anna is the Chief Digital Officer for the Canadian Film Centre. And the Canadian Film Centre, or the CFC, they're doing all kinds of amazing things with virtual reality and immersive technology. And they recently published a study of Canada's ecosystem, and which is available online at pulseonvr.ca. But Anna's going to tell us all about it. Really exciting stuff. So before we start speaking with, with Anna, I just want to give you some quick updates on Immersed 2017. So this is a, the, a, the, an annual event that's put on by the Immersive Technology Alliance. We're very proud of it. Last year we had a public exhibition that had as many as eight to 9,000 visitors over the course of four days, museum visitors. This year we're expanding it to a full four days. So we're looking at upwards of 13,000 museum visitors over the course of four days at the Ontario Science Centre. For those who are unfamiliar, Immersed is both a business to business as well as a business to consumer uh, conference. So the business to business side, top speakers, meals, networking. It's an industry building event. The media will be there. Really exciting stuff. Um, this year, we've already got some top speakers involved. Neil Trevitt, who's the president of the Kronos Group. They're responsible for OpenGL and Vulkan, and they're currently working on an open XR, open standard for virtual reality and immersive technology. Really exciting stuff. Jose Luis Navarro, he's CEO of InMedia Studio. They're well known for the Mission Impossible 5 virtual reality experience. Their most recent work is the virtual reality experience tied to Mars, which is a TV show on National Geographic. Really exciting stuff. And uh, Patrice Roulet Fontani, who's Vice President of Technology for Immervision. Immervision makes all kinds of 360 panamorph lenses. Their stuff is all in all kinds of immersive technology. It's really, really uh, ex ex exciting stuff. And of course, there are other uh, uh, speakers as well. Just go to getimmersed.com to learn more. And on the consumer side, what we do each year is we hold a big exhibition to showcase all kinds of immersive technology to the general public. And as I mentioned last year, the museum had about eight to 9,000 visitors over the course of the three days that Immersed was running. This year, we've expanded it to four days. We're anticipating upwards of 13,000 visitors over the course of four days. So we're really excited. We want people trying this technology and being as excited as we are. So there's really a lot to look forward to. So again, Immersed runs October 19th through 22nd. You can learn more at getimmersed.com. There is only one Immersed, and I'm hoping to see you there. So on that note, let's continue our Canada, Canada Day celebrations. We'll be back with more right after this. To my immediate left is Anna Serrano. She's Chief Digital Officer for the Canadian Film Centre. Welcome to the program, Anna. Hi, Neil. So all, always a pleasure. For, for those unfamiliar, what is the Canadian Film Centre? What do you guys do? So the Canadian Film Centre is a, quite an old national institution, almost 30 years old, founded by Academy Award winning filmmaker Norman Jewison. So we're the preeminent institution for filmmakers, television makers, digital media makers, um, anyone who's basically, uh, you know, anyone in the media and entertainment industry uh, and has made sort of um, uh, recognizable uh, properties like Orphan Black or Travelers or things like that have typically come through the film center. Um, and in the digital media space, uh, we have trained a number of the now uh, major digital leaders um, in Canada, including founder of Secret Location, head of digital for CBC. Um, and most recently in the past uh, six years, we've um, launched Canada's only uh, media and entertainment uh, accelerator called Idea Boost, where we invest in media and entertainment technology companies, including VR companies. So w w why is this so important? I mean, clearly the CFC is playing a, a pivotal role, a role in, in driving content in Canada. Why was it founded? Why was this so necessary? 
Well, I think it was necessary. I mean, the way Norman Jewison sort of tells the story, um, he had uh, gone to L.A. or he's been doing business in L.A. for quite a long time and um, had also just seen the American Film Institute uh, and thought, you know, why don't we have the Canadian Film Institute? We should have, you know, we should celebrate uh, the successes of our incredible um, uh, screen media talent in our country and also have an atelier and a conservatory and a place where the best talent around the country can go to become the, the leaders in the media entertainment industry. And so that's really how this whole thing began is to have this sort of national um, signature uh, facility that would wear all the best and the brightest in media entertainment would go through. All right, wonderful. Now, my understanding is CFC does a lot of investing. I mean, they invest in technology, they invest in content. Uh, am I right? Is that pretty much? Yes, yeah. So, I mean, I would say the very first things we've invested in, if you will, um, outside of the training programs that and the productions and the training programs that we do, um, one of our signature programs has been the Feature Film Project, or what was then known as the Feature Film Project, headed by the inimitable leader, um, Justine White. And so uh, executive producer, Justine White. And so, you know, that particular program has been producing uh, uh, really wonderful Canadian feature films for a very long time. And since then, we've done all sorts of other productions um, in the digital media space, um, including Canada's first ever uh, user generated content site, which we produced in 2000 called the Great Canadian Story Engine. So uh, this was pre social media, pre flash on the web, pre video, etc. And we converted this Airstream trailer, um, and it actually traveled across ca Canada gathering stories from Canadians and then hosting them online. So we've done a bunch of uh, sort of productions like that. And as I just mentioned earlier, you know, most recently uh, we moved into the technology investment space um, by starting Canada's first media and entertainment accelerator, Idea Boost. And so um, for the past six years, we have about 30 to 50 companies in our portfolio. So, um, so yeah, I think, I think the reason why we think it's important to um, invest in both content uh, content creation as well as technology um, acceleration uh, is because um, the media and entertainment industry are cha is changing rapidly and we want to know and be um, sort of at the cutting edge of that, that change and also be looking for who the new leaders are going to be. Now, I expect this is going to be a difficult question to answer, but, you know, being in the space of investing into future ideas and, and you know, content technologies, you know, is there criteria or a mindset that you look for in things that CFC is going to ultimately back versus, you know, all the opportunities that you, you can't necessarily support? Sure. I mean, I think in terms of the uh, content space, for example, oh, I, I, it, if I speak to the VR content production that we currently do now, um, what we try to do is to try to um, lead sort of with um, the notion that as a not-for-profit agency, uh, we should try to be a lot more open to experimentation and a lot more open to doing things that perhaps the private sector can't bear um, in terms of um, uh, the type of content that they might produce. So to that end, we're really constantly looking for ideas and collaborators who are interested in trying something new in terms of VR content production. So our most recent production, for example, was a collaboration with the Art Gallery of Ontario and Seneca College. And um, this was uh, the first time that micro CT scans were used um, in a VR experience for uh, of an artistic object um, from the Middle Ages uh, to be distributed and showcased at an art gallery. So that's something that, you know, um, I think was a was a when we first started that particular experience or that project, um, we didn't really anticipate that it would actually be shown and demoed. We just thought it was an experiment and we were helping the conservators at the AGO really understand um, the nature of these objects, these 15th century Gothic beads. Um, but the but the piece that we ended up creating was compelling enough to be included in the exhibition at the AGO and the Met Cloisters. So that's an, that's an interesting example of the type of work that we do. 
So it sounds like you invest in really experimental things. Like, you know, you, you brought up that the private sector may not support them, but they could be like amazing ideas that could lead to wonderful, you know, enhancements for, for the market at large. And the, the CFC tends to be behind yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So let's talk about virtual reality. I know I've heard the word a couple times in the conversation already, but obviously CFC is taking an interest in, in the VR space. What's the CFC's vision for virtual reality? Why is this media so important to, to Canadian Film Centre? Well, I mean, it's it's it shouldn't be surprising that the Canadian Film Center and and in particular the CFC Media Lab is bullish about VR. I mean, we've essentially been one of the few institutions who uh, bet on new media as a space for storytelling very very early on. So we opened. I actually founded the Media Lab in the in the late '90s, in 1997, and um, the Media Lab's mandate and has been and still is now is to really build the capacity um, for the industry to be created who are who are kind of the above the line talent, the above the line companies, the creative companies in terms of how digital networked media will be a medium for storytelling, a medium for entertainment, and a medium for new types of narrative-based experiences, right? And so we've been uh, sort of uh, doing all sorts of programming and activities and productions and, and work uh, with that sort of notion in mind, with that vision in mind. And so when this iteration of the VR evolution came about with the, with the introduction of the DK1, the Oculus Rift DK1, that was, to us, that was just an extension of yet another platform um, that's essentially digital and networked again, except in this case, it has the added feature of, of being an embodied medium and a spatial medium. And, um, and that just extends the palette, the, the, the palette that we have for interactive and immersive storytelling. So um, it was a natural thing for us to move into because we've always been doing research, production, and um, training and investment in that space. All right, good stuff. So when, when I mean, the DK1 is a few years ago already, and obviously we've seen a lot of progress since then with all kinds of solutions in the market. You know, what's your vision? I mean, when, when I say your vision, how do you see VR playing in our day-to-day five years from now? Well, I think it's going to be immersive media um, that uh, I, the way I think of VR is I really think about how immersive media will um, will sort of impact our daily lives. And immersive media becomes a continuum of media um, and a continuum where uh, you, the user, hopefully it's the user, chooses to decide how much virtuality seeps into their reality. OK, and so that could mean um, sort of. Uh, fairly light based augmented reality types of experiences where um, the user might just um, allow for no push notifications to go in in you know in front of their view of the world um, uh, all the way to full escapist immersion or VR which is what we know VR as where the user might be too tired after a, a full day and decide to fully escape into another space and um, embody that space and do some, you know, either uh, meditating in it or playing games in it or hanging out with their friends in it. So but I think it's a limited. A yeah. So, sorry, go ahead. You finish your thought. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, I think it is a continuum between those, you know, how much virtual goes into our real. And we're not, what I was going to say is it's not limited to virtual reality. There's all kinds of immersive technologies like mixed reality and augmented reality. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And obviously, like we're we're looking at the at, at the visual sort of expression of immersive media, but over time, um, that visual expression will be augmented with other sensory forms of expression. Whether that's going to be audio and um, you know a, a, a sound a, a, a sense haptic. Um, smell um, haptic. So so all so immersive media is not necessarily just a, a visual stuff. So let's talk a little bit about Canada. And when I say Canada, let's be a little more precise. Pulse on VR. What is Pulse on VR? So Pulse on VR is an ongoing, um, well, we call it a living ecosystem study. So it's an ongoing study 
of um, currently as it as it's you know sort of situated. Although based on our you know we just talked about the fact that our vision is immersive media, so eventually it's going to cover the whole gamut, right? But currently, um, Pulsom VR is um, an ongoing ecosystem study of the VR ecosystem in Canada, um, and so uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a website, so you can go there to pulsomvr.ca where um, VR companies across the country can um, add their data and keep updating their data. And every quarter, we basically publish fresh data on the ecosystem as it evolves, essentially. And we're, our intention is to keep it alive for over the next two to five years um, during this very exciting time when we're just seeing VR uh, sort of uh, uh, evolve into hopefully a mainstream medium in five years time. So, and w why is this important? Why was it important to do Pulse on VR? Well, it's, I think it's important because, um, you know, it, it, it's a very competitive global market now. And I think that um, it's important for Canadians to have a, um, a kind of a, a, a better sense of how we how we can all kind of like um, uh, understand our role in this global sort of VR ecosystem that everyone's trying to um, vie for. And right now there's no real like recognizable sort of geographic cluster for VR, right? Not in the same way that let's say you might think of a, in film. So when people say, where in the world this is the best film cluster? And people will go, oh, what's Hollywood, you know? Or um, in fact, it is uh, Ontario as the third largest um, entertainment cluster in North America. Or, you know, for advertising, you go, that's New York. And for media, et cetera. So you can start to point to these kinds of areas. Um, VR, since it's still fairly new, hasn't sort of um, resolved into a particular geographic uh, space uh, in terms of where the kind of um, top notch clusters are. So I think um, it's a good time for us to get really bullish on fully understanding our capabilities as a country and understanding um, who's who and doing what and, um, and then making specific decisions collectively as a group, um, as the, as the public sector, you know, with government agencies, et cetera, as a private sector, um, Omer's Ventures is one of our partners. And as a startup ecosystem, you know, all these um, participants, participating companies in the, in the um, study um, make certain decisions based on what we uncover in the data. And so I think it's really a, a great tool to help um, all the different stakeholders in the system make really informed decisions about how to help grow that ecosystem. So, you know, if, if I was from outside the country, let's say I was based in the US, based in Europe, and I was to go to pulseonvr.ca, yeah. what, what do you think it would say about Canada in general from an immersive technology point of view? What do you think the message, what, what, do you, what message do you think it delivers? I think at first blush, the message it delivers is, Jesus, these people are on the ball. Like, I can't believe they got together to actually do this together, you know? Um, so, I, and I think that's a very strong message. You know, the Canadian brand, um, speaking of the fact that it's Canada Day, right, or it's Canada Week Day weekend, you know, the Canadian brand is an, at an all-time high right now. Um, not, uh, yes, because of what's going on in other places around the world, especially down south, but also because um, you know, people have been paying attention to how we do things. And um, I think this is another one of those markers that's super great for the Canadian brand, because when they go to pulseonvr.ca, they realize how collaborative the nature of the industry is in this country. And that is a massive plus. Yeah, we have, I really do think we have a lot to be proud of in Canada. It's, it's about, I mean, in all industries, but especially in immersive technology, we, I think we have a lot a lot to offer. So it, when if so, question for you: What kind of data could people find in Pulse on VR? 
So it's everything from like how many employees are currently working in VR and of those employees, how many are 100 percent working in VR or part time working in VR? Um, what are the kinds of um, products that are being created? How many products are currently being created by these different companies? Um, you know, what sectors are they creating these products for? So very sort of specific things that we can. And then and then all of that stuff is is um is uh, searchable by region. So you can compare like um, th that type of data um, in Ontario versus Quebec versus BC. So it's a, it, we're, we use Tableau software to kind of generate the visualizations. And so the pulseonvr.ca is not only free data and free insights, but it's interactive data so that you can make your own sort of um, uh, decisions on what you think the data uh, uh, represents and by playing around with the variables, et cetera. Now, from the point of view of, of people looking to do business in Canada, is it helpful to them? Like, will it give them contacts or? or yeah, we also have a list of all the companies that have participated in the survey. So there's a kind of a directory. Um, we didn't, because everyone has a website, it's really literally just a regional directory of companies. So it's a good place to kind of just quickly find um, companies working in the space. All right, good stuff. Well, Anna, really great to, to great stuff to hear. Happy Canada Day. And yes. so if people <laughs> want to get their hands on the data, just pulse on vr.ca. Yeah, and go fiddle around, <laughs> fiddle away in the data sets. <laughs> There's a lot there. Really impressive stuff. So congratulations on this. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Neil, and happy Canada Day to you too. Thank you so much. Take we'll be care. back with okay. more right after this. Thank you for visiting me in my messy basement. If you want to be a guest on the show, send an email to neilsmessybasement at mtbs3d.com. We'll be talking again soon. Thank you for watching.